I remember when I started university, I was utterly staggered by the transition. Gone were the days of relying on rote memorization and last minute cramming. I now had to work my butt off, thinking critically about what I was learning and manage my time to make every minute count. Of course, I was one of millions of students who make the leap to tertiary education every year. And the challenges for nursing students are no different. Nursing school is an avalanche of anatomical terminology, pharmacology, psychiatry procedures, and more. So if you thought high school biology was hard, brace yourself for impact. But don't freak out because today I have experienced registered nurse Choma Okeke with me, whose website choosingnursing.net helps new students and graduated nurses alike acclimatize to their new realities while injecting hope and motivation into their daily study routines. And today, Nurse Choma will be giving us the secrets to successfully starting and finishing nursing school. Okay. All right, so let's start at the very beginning. How do nurse students choose the best nursing school for them? You have to do your research, because um, I'll be honest, not every program is a good program. Mm. Um, and so you have to make sure first that it's accredited. So that's probably the biggest thing. Make sure it's accredited, make sure it's recognized with the boards of nursing for your state, because mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of private schools that are not. And then you need to also make sure to find out what their passing rate is, their NCLEX passing rate. Um, okay. Those three factors are so, so crucial. Otherwise, like um, it can cause some really negative consequences afterwards when you're trying to uh, move on to the next um, step. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what's the hardest part about transitioning from high school or even another career field entirely to nursing school? You know what, there was a, a fact that I read that said that getting your, getting a bachelor's degree in nursing is actually the hardest degree to get. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes a lot of sense because like other degrees or other, um, you know, other types of programs, it's more so like logical information. So you read it, you memorize it, you right. move on. But nursing is so conceptual, you mm -hmm. know, I remember like for me, when I was in high school, I was like a straight A student. I had a high GPA, but then when I started nursing school, I felt like I was an idiot. <laughs> I you know, I really honestly felt like I knew nothing. And the transition was ch challenging because I wasn't expecting it to be so difficult. Mm -hmm. So the best thing I can really tell people is that you have to be ready to give it your all. Like you can't go in this with just like a partial, like, I'm gonna mm -hmm. just do the bare minimum because it's not gonna work out for you. So really just giving it your all, um, making yourself as available as possible to really focus study. And ideally, if you can seek a mentor or at least connect with somebody else in your program, like make a friend. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have mentors and study buddies. Like I would have wanted to quit too. Wow. So th the biggest transition really is like, you know, really be willing to put everything into this because it's a huge uh, reward, really huge reward once you fit, once you finish, excuse me, and then also connect with other people who are in the same boat as you or have already surpassed you. Wow. I so relate to that because I was a straight A student in school as well. Mm -hmm. And then I studied science and I just felt like a complete idiot as well. I was right. like, you know, the more I study, the more stupid I feel. Right. <laughs> and yeah, my then professor gave me one of the most profound pieces of advice at the time. And he said, you know, if you're studying science and you feel stupid, you're doing it right. Because that's exactly the point. It's, it's arrogance that's dangerous in studying the science. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So then what do you consider to be keys to passing nursing school, aside from the ones you've mentioned, you know, in getting mentors and study groups? Um, for one, you got to attend office hours and try to try to have a, um, uh, I don't say like a close relationship with your instructor, but try to see them as much as possible. Try to talk to them as much as possible. So they can, you can really get in their face about like, hey, what do you think about how I'm doing? What do you think I can improve or get better at? Um, mm -hmm. Because it does make a difference. I, I've seen a lot of people who have gone through their program and like they literally missed a class by like a point. Wow. Um, the instructor did not, you know, uh, pass them. Uh, but if if they had 
you know, 10 office hours regularly, if they had developed more of a strong relationship with the instructor, they would have seen their efforts yeah. and it, it probably would have been more in their favor. Mm -hmm. So definitely for one is like really be in the office hours as much as possible. That's for, honestly the biggest thing I could say, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then also I really recommend getting books that takes the information that you're learning in your class and makes it easier to comprehend. Right. So um, a lot of the books, like I still have my books actually from nursing school and they're like huge, like thousand pages, uh, very complicated. So one thing that helped me a lot was getting books that simplified it, mm -hmm. that made it easier to comprehend, easier to grasp. Uh, and that made a huge difference with the transition. Yeah. So I would say like, getting books that takes complicated topics and makes them simplified makes a world of a difference as well yeah and you can also use flashcards for that purpose as well yeah, mm -hmm. yeah definitely. um okay so what are some of the biggest roadblocks students encounter as they train to become nurses and how can they overcome them oh man man oh. <laughs> How much time you got? <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, okay. So the first to, to me, when I was in nursing school, it wasn't as hard as it today, as it is today. Mm -hmm. I feel like they put more blocks into place. So the first one is like a lot of programs require you to pass the T's exam, the T's or the um, HESI entrance exam. So first is passing that initial exam first, which is, is it's just more basic. So I want to say like math, English, grammar, Mm -hmm. uh, biology. So first, like it's passing that, um, then of course, going through the program and being successful in the actual program itself. Uh, and then it's another test at the pass because some programs, they have it where you can't even finish your diploma unless you pass the HESI exit exam uh, well, or the ATI a exit exam. Yeah. And then on top, then you have to still pass the MCAS exam. So it's like all of these exams that they put yeah. in place to make it really, um, you know, just, I always say to filter out the people that really want it, honestly, you have to really, really want it. So, um, you know, those are probably the biggest roadblocks is like a series of tasks that just makes the process a little bit more, mm. um, you know, and like also the prerequisites, you gotta, you gotta take the prerequisites and you gotta pass them with at least a C average uh, but my school, my program made it where you had to pass with at least a B minus average. Oh, so, um, yeah, so it's really like, I would say it's all the things you have to complete to even get into the program. And then also some of the steps that they complete in, or, in order to finish it. Those are all the roadblocks. Yeah. I mean, that's a shame because I wonder how many students get deterred by these entrance exams, yeah. if, especially if they're coming from disadvantaged schooling and it's just yeah. like so intimidating and if they fail, it's almost like they might just get deflected from that path as a nurse. Yeah, so, so. yeah. I'm so good. I wish they would get rid of it. <laughs> to be so honest, persevere if you're a yeah. student. Absolutely. Persevere. Take Absolutely. it again if you fail. You can do this. So, yeah. Definitely. All right. So once a nurse graduates, as you said, the NCLEX or licensing exam is like that final hurdle before they can start practicing. So at what point in nursing school should students actually start studying for the NCLEX? Definitely the last semester. It's too early to study earlier than that because um, there's just there's still more things you will need to comprehend and grasp throughout mm -hmm. your program. Um, so I would say like in the last semester, you should be first identifying like okay when do you want to take the test, um, what review or what type of review are you going to do specifically, based on how confident you feel and based on your nursing program's passing rate. Mm. So, um, you know, some schools, they already have like a partnership with certain types of reviews right. where, right. you know, you just go to that review because it's already with your program. It's already included in your fees, um, you know, but then you have to make a conscious decision on what you know it's going to work for you. So I would definitely say the last semester you can start usually the last semester is not as difficult as the previous semester so now you have more time um and more flexibility more confidence so definitely the last semester you should start studying for yeah. the mm -hmm. okay um and then what are your three best study tips for acing the NCLEX one is that you got to make sure that you have a wide base knowledge of the content right. so the thing that gets a lot of people 
that where people don't pass is that they don't know as much as they thought they knew. Yeah. So really like you want to make sure that you have a rounded base knowledge, mm -hmm. everything from knowing the diseases to knowing procedures, to knowing um, how to delegate um, complications, Medi medications, safety pre precautions. So having a well-rounded content knowledge base. Mm -hmm. Two is that you got to be consistent. I get a lot of people that were really close to passing, but the reason why they didn't pass is because like, for example, they took a break, like, right. like they graduated, like, oh yeah, we're good. And it took like six months off or they, you know, they went on a vacation. Mm -hmm. So they just lost that momentum and they didn't really get it quite back mm -hmm. when they were preparing for the exam. And unfortunately now it's like years later mm -hmm. and they still haven't passed. So being consistent until you finish right. uh, will be the second thing and then critical thinking. So, um, I recommend every time you learn a strategy to answer any questions, write it down, like okay. note, take it, uh, okay. and use that to practice with other questions mm. to build up your confidence and thinking more critically. Yeah. The, especially the RN exam, the, the RN exam is testing you based on your nursing judgment. Okay. So you can't really create judgment if you don't know how to think critically and assess the situation. So those are the three top things I would um, recommend. Having a wide-based content knowledge, being consistent, mm -hmm. and then really working on your critical thinking skills. That's it. Yeah, excellent advice. And of course, with the critical thinking practice is is where it comes from that, the, you know, taking practice exams and mm -hmm. um, yeah, throughout your education, really, so that you know what the NCLEX looks and feels like. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. So finally, how does your brand choosing nursing.net help students crush nursing school and the NCLEX? I would say, I mean, a couple of things, like I really try to separate myself by two main elements. Like one is being of a, a place of positivity and encouragement, Yeah. like really addressing the mental health of the student, mm -hmm. of the graduate. You know, um, I think that's one area that we we people ignore is that, oh, just study everything and, you know, good luck. But it's mentally challenging sometimes. It's mentally draining, yeah. um, you know. And so I try to be that force that, like, in, gives people, encourages you, tells you to believe in yourself, put yourself in a positive environment. Um, I remember recently, like, I was teaching my class with my students and I asked them to tell them to tell me just one thing that you feel like you took you took away the most from our class today. And this and like seven out of ten people said you gave us back our hope. Oh. And that blew my mind because I'm like, wow, like that was the biggest thing. Like not all the medical stuff we talked about. But <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah. So I would say that the biggest thing is like because if you don't feel like you can do it you're not going to do it you're yeah. not like you could give somebody like so much information but if you don't if they don't have the mental stamina to do it they're yeah. not going to do it so yeah. i would say that's the biggest thing is like just really instilling that belief system mm -hmm. by encouraging you through quotes content videos anything i can say to kind of be i even have like a a, a prayer and prayer line where i encourage people and pray for people that feel like they're really struggling to oh. pass the test. And then the other side as well is honestly just showing you how, as far as the NCLEX, showing you the bigger picture. Yeah, right. Showing you like the totality of preparing for the exam, mm -hmm. not just like a piece of the puzzle. So yeah. a lot of times when people are preparing, they don't realize it, but you're only getting a piece of the puzzle. Whether, whether it's telling you, oh, just do a bunch of questions or, oh, just review content. That's only a piece of it. Mm. I try to show you the whole picture, mm. you know, like, okay, it's this and this and this too. But like, the, so I try to do my best to illustrate the blueprint. Yeah. And that's what brings people to a place where like, okay, I can do this. And they do do it and they pass. So that's, that's what I would say. Yeah, I can imagine, you know, if you're studying a particular area and you find it quite difficult that you just get obsessive and, and lost in that. And then instead of seeing the, the bigger picture as yeah. you think, yeah. 
Well, that's such great advice. So uh, thank you so much for talking to me yeah. today. I think, you know, people watching this will, as you say, you've restored hope. And yeah. that's a wonderful thing to do for people. So thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. All right. Well, there you have it. The best advice on how to make the transition to nursing school and then finish in fine style by acing the NCLEX. And if you want to get your education off to the best possible start or need help with your NCLEX studies, I really encourage you to check out Choma's website at choosingnursing.net, where you'll find some quality resources to keep you focused, effective and motivated to work hard and do well. If you are studying to become a registered nurse or nurse practitioner, make sure you get Brainscape's NCLEX or nursing flashcards, which will help you study so much more efficiently and keep up that healthy cadence of daily review that is so essential for doing well in these content heavy subjects. For even more guidance, check out the other videos we have on Brainscape's nursing channel and go to the Academy for A to Z study guides on how to excel in nursing school and beyond. These tools, together with your ambition and hard work, is everything you need to rise to your challenge.